Senator thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Cassidy. Thank you, Senator. Yes, Secretary, Secretary Mnuchin, a couple com a comment, uh, a request, and then a question. Uh, first, I'll add uh, to the comments on the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. Working in Louisiana, Louisiana-based companies like Builder Supply Company in Shreveport, Iberia Bank based in Lafayette, Gulf Coast Bank in New Orleans, as well as uh, big box stores like Home Depot, Walmart, Best Buy, uh, they're given better, uh, they're given bonuses, better wages, better benefits, all benefiting. On the long-term capital investment, ExxonMobil, with a major presence in Louisiana, announced $35 billion in CapEx investment. That's going to increase competition for workers, driving up their wages. That is the way to reduce income inequality. Uh, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act bill has been good for our state, and uh, thank you for your role in it, and I'm proud to have participated. Now, a request, if you will. Um, the... Um, one of, the, uh, one of the provisions in the tax bill was to provide fair treatment for taxpayers in a lost position upon deemed repatriation under Section 965. Uh, the intent's clear. Pre-repatriation losses are ring-fenced, but a potential question has arisen as regards losses in 2017. So I just ask that your department would work with us. We have an amendment to address that, but want to make sure that we can address that. We, we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Let me now go to uh, something that White House raised, um, the uh, FinCEN, uh, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Next, Next Work, Network. You all have a strategic plan uh, for 2018 through 2022 to modernize the system, the analytical capabilities, to better collect, assess, disseminate, and act upon financial data and intelligence. In my office, we're looking at how the f drug cartels transfer $110 billion per year from the United States down into Mexico. Best we can tell, Treasury's getting about $7 billion of it. And we know it's going through bulk cash, it's going through trade-based money laundering, it's going through people buying cards that have $10,000 on them and they're bringing down another form of bulk cash, if you will. Uh, it, we're not sure, though, that the interdepartmental cooperation is very good. It's been a little difficult to find out, but it seems like we have one department doing this, another that, and another this. But the departments are not doing it in concert. Uh, clearly, this is important, and it's a way to get at the cartels. Frankly, I'd like to use that money to pay for the wall. It wouldn't be the Mexican government. It would be the Mexican cartels. But you take out their ability to finance their crime mission. Uh, any comments on the effectiveness of our different departments working together? Um, from, from my experience, Senator, I actually think the departments are, are working very well together, but on this specific issue, we look forward to following up with you. It, it is a very important issue, and we want to do everything we can to get the money from the cartels. Now, it seems, though, just, just kind of prima facie, if you will, you got $110 billion so reportedly moving south, and Treasury's only getting $7 billion of it. That seems to be a big gap. Um, so we would like to continue to work with you on this because $7 billion is just, you know, what you might lose in the back of your couch if you're worth $110 billion per year, and we need to grab that. Um, we also understand that FinCEN and its anti-money laundering mission uh, uses data provided by the private sector financial institutions, and again, this may relate to what Sheldon was speaking about. Does FinCEN have a process for verifying information contained in suspicion, sus suspicious transaction reports? Um, they, they, they do, and they use those SARS uh, to follow up with the institutions. But one of the problems, is, as has already been pointed out, is the issue of beneficial ownership. Uh, we have a flaw in our process of how to track beneficial ownership. And whether we do it at the state level or the federal government level, that's something we need to solve. Will that require a statute, or can you do that by regulation? To address, uh, to address the issue of the uh, lack of clarity regarding beneficial ownership? Uh, it, it's, it's unclear. It depends on what the solution is and which way we go. But this is something that we do want to work with Congress and make sure that we're enacting it the right way. Okay. Uh, I'm almost out of time. I yield back. 